Thanks, David. Um, I want to introduce the Psychology and Sustainability Group, which is based in the School of Psychology. And when I say psychology, it really means behavioral science. We don't do very much on the clinical side of things, just to kind of explain that a bit. Our research focuses really on two things. One is how we affect the environment, and that's the classic sustainability approach. And two examples here through energy use, energy use, um, CO2 emissions, um, effect on climate change. So if we unplug our devices more often or we're a bit more energy efficient, that should have an effect. And also the second example here is littering, so resource use. I mean, that's an extreme example, but we can also influence resource use through purchasing decisions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's one of the approaches we're taking, one, one focus we're taking. And the question here is how do we communicate these issues best and how do we change people's attitudes and behaviours as a starting point? The second issue we're focusing on is very much the opposite. How does the environment affect us? And that's related to some things that were discussed earlier. Jill was talking about ecosystem services. Paul was talking about ecosystem services. So here the question is, what are the psychological benefits of using the natural environments, of being out there? What, ha what happens to you when you sit on this bench and you look at this lovely view? It also gives rise to some very interesting integrated questions. So for example, what happens when you sit on that bench and there's a whole load of marine litter floating in front of you? So it's kind of getting to a more intricate level. But what I want to do today is give you two examples for those two approaches that we're taking, just to illustrate this a little bit. Um, and the first example is, I said earlier, we focus on communication, on raising awareness, and climate change is difficult to communicate. I think everyone is in this room knows this. It's complex, it's abstract. Many people think it's intangible. What does it do to me? Where's the effect that I can see or feel? It feels distant to most people, perhaps not so much to the scientists who do this every day, but to many people in the street. And one example for this is the IPCC report. I'm not singling this out, I'm just saying this is a classic example. It's meant to be accessible, there's even a summary for policymakers, but it's still quite jargony. It's not that easy to understand. So in this particular study, we thought, how can we improve climate change communications? And we thought we'd use a different angle on it. Our angle is health, health effects of climate change, which people don't talk about so much. And we use a different presentation format, um, information graphics. And this project is led by Will Stahl Timmins, who's a graphics designer, which is very, very useful to have on the project, obviously. Um, we ran a study with 900 participants, um, a UK general public representative sample. We actually paid a company to get these people for us, because again, that's hard. And we applied an experimental design to these people. We randomized them into five different conditions. And these conditions were two different health topics. One was the effects of air quality, air pollution, things like um, um, air diseases of the airways, etc. Second one was the effects of floods and storms, just to have two issues that we could possibly generalize a little bit. And those two issues, those two topics were presented either in this lovely graphical format, which Will designed, um, it's very small, but you get the idea. Or it was presented in the original textual format. So this is what comes directly from the IPCC report. And what Will attempted to do is stay as close to that as he could. So this is translated into these lovely diagrams. So we had four different conditions here uh, of people who received some information. And we had a comparison group as well um, who didn't receive anything. And I've summarized this in extremely brief format. Um, these are our main findings. People spent less time on the infographics. We were a bit surprised by that. But actually, they retained more what it said in those infographics. And they also had somewhat higher risk perception. Risk perception wasn't quite such a strong effect. But we're very excited about this because it means, if we can replicate this, that uh, infographics are much more efficient. If you spend less time, but you actually retain more or you have the same increase in risk perception, that's quite exciting, given the information overload that we face normally. So that's one of the studies that's starting to change the way we approach these issues and perhaps motivate more sustainable behavior. If I go to the second example, very different question. Um, which natural environments are reported to be most beneficial for us in our recent visits. So this is a self-report study. We're using data here from a large um, survey that Natural England has run. 
uh, on several thousand recent visits that they asked people about. Um, these are the visits represented on the map. You can see there are some coastal visits, the kind of blue dots all the way around England. There are some country, open countryside, these are the green dots, and there are some urban parks, obviously lots in London um, and in other big urban areas. Um, and we wanted to know which of these natural spaces were reported as being better. So we're comparing these different natural environments. If we look at all activities, this is positive affect or psychological benefit from it. They're all good, so going to an urban park is reasonably good, higher than a zero effect, but the best ones are the coastal environments. So this is the coastline, including beaches, etc. These are seaside, built-up areas, resorts and towns. So that's quite nice. Coast is best. We like that story because we're here in the southwest. We have a lot of it. Um, might this be an effect of activities? Because people do different things in different environments. I know some people here like surfing, so is this an effect of surfing or something like that? So it's important to look at particular activities. We looked at the most common activity, which is walking, and we find exactly the same. So even if you're saying it's, the, um, it's, it's not an effect of different activities, it's actually when you focus on the same thing that people do. That's me. Done. Um, we've got more projects. Um, this is just a slide thanking collaborators and funders, but we've got a stall, and Bonnie and Christina will be very happy to talk to you about various projects. Um, come and visit us there.